What's cracking everyone? My name is Ryan and today we are taking a look at a flagship dongle from iBaso that retails in at $449 and takes a blueprint from their $3,500 flagship DAP, the DX320 Max. Now let me introduce you to the iBaso DC Elite. First of all, I want to send a big thank you out to Audio46 who did provide me with the DC Elite for all of my thoughts and all of my opinions. And guys, if you haven't done so already, please check out Audio46 online. They have a ton of audio products available as well as a storefront right in Times Square off of 46th Street. Head on in, get yourself a demo of something that you want to check out. I would highly recommend it. All right, so the DC Elite, first of all, comes in this beautiful titanium alloy shell that's got some decent weight to it. It actually weighs just over 60 grams, and it has these grooves on the titanium alloy that makes this extra grippy, as well as tempered glass surrounding the alloy shell. Don't worry about dropping it, scratching it, or things, because it also comes with this bluish green leather case that this will easily slide into. Now, it has a 24 position four section attenuator, not a volume pot, it's an attenuator, as well as a 4.4 balanced output. It has a three and a half mil single ended output that doubles as a three and a half mil coaxial output. We'll talk about that here in a minute. And then on the side, there is a button here that will be your selector and an LED right next to the selector. Now, one of them can be your standby mode for when it's not doing anything at all, obviously. Green is gonna be PCM mode, blue is gonna be DSD mode, and then white is gonna be when you wanna use this as a coaxial output. Hold in that button that will select that. This will glow white and you're good to go. Hey there, really quick, if I can grab your attention, please like videos like this if you do indeed like them and join the channel. I am trying to get to 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year. I also have a Patreon. If you'd like to support the channel, you can do that as well. I would highly appreciate that. All right, so discussing the guts and the innards of the DC Elite, the first thing I wanna start with is the DAC chip that's utilized, and that is the ROM chip, or ROM chip, it's R-O-H-M, and there's some letters and numbers I'm gonna just spit out on the screen instead of trying to recite that to you guys, but it is taken exactly from their flagship DAP, the DX320 Max. Now, if you're curious about some actual technical numbers as far as the power output goes, I can tell you that the balanced Voltage output is gonna be about 4.6. And then if you are plugging in IEM's headphones, you're gonna get 280 milliwatts at 32 ohms and 70 milliwatts at 300 ohms out of the balanced. And then out of the single ended, you're gonna get about 2.28 output voltage, which equates to about 162 milliwatts at 32 ohms. But don't look at those numbers and think that is low power. This is a current output. So those numbers really don't mean a lot because current output works in a different way. Right, and so to explain the attenuator a little bit further, you actually get 20 steps on the volume dial, but then you get additional four steps when you're using the app. So let's talk about the app really quick. First thing you're gonna get is two digital filter options. There is a sharp roll off and a slow roll off so that you can hear the difference between the two and decide for yourself. Then you are gonna get four PCM volume options. Now, zero is the default, and then negative one, negative two, or negative three. So if you need to lower the volume for some higher sensitive IEMs, you can do that within the app and it will save automatically. Then you're going to also get a DSD filter option of low, medium, and high. Then you're also gonna see a PCM DSD volume match toggle, as well as switching to the SPDIF mode, which you can also press and hold the button on the doggle to go in that mode as well. Now, any settings that you change in the app will save. Now, before I move on further, I wanna give you one quick tip, and that is if you do have an Android phone, don't download the app from the Google Play Store. Instead, go to iBaso website and go to find the download there. For some reason, when I downloaded it through the Google Play Store, it would not recognize the dongle, but when I downloaded the APK file within iBaso's site, 
it worked perfectly with my Samsung S24 Ultra. So I definitely recommend doing that. <laughs> All right, so I am going to talk about different pairings that I had with this dongle, but first I wanna to talk to you about the general sound profile and just tell you that I am very impressed with the just full natured and robust sound of this dongle. Right, Rigo? You guys don't know what I'm talking about. But this has a very robust sound to it, as I said. It is just, it's a gap filler. It's like other dongle DACs that I've listened to in the past, they might be extra wide or they might have some bass emphasis or some extra mid-range, but there's gonna be little gaps where you just don't feel completely filled in with your sound. And this does all of that. It's expansive. And I don't mean expansive as in very, very wide. I mean expansive as in it just doesn't lack in the layers and things that you get with the sound in my opinion, for what I've listened to. Now, I will tell you that this has an incredible amount of impact into the low end, which I really dig that about this dongle DAC. So if you got headphones and IMs that are gonna take advantage of that, you're gonna love that sound. It's very full in the bass response as well. Now, mid-range is more neutral. It is not extra punchy, kind of like the basses with that impact of being extra slammy, slammy. And I would say the mid-range is also very full and has lots of resolution and details as long as the gear can allow that. But the treble is the other secret sauce they've got going on with this DAC chip, with this dongle, in that it's detailed, it's got excellent imaging, I feel nice spacious stage with this as well, and extra layering, but it doesn't have that bite. And I can tell you that if you pair this up with some different headphones or IEMs that are maybe a little bit too spicy for you, this tamed that a little bit. And I was very impressed by that and actually very glad by that because there's times where that's going to be needed. That kind of segues me in to talk about the different pairings that I've done with the DC Elite. I think it's important to note how I did my testing. So I use Tidal High Res for my streaming and I do that through my Android phone. Now I do use UApp on my Android phone because it's Android but I also use a tablet, I use my laptop, and I plug this directly into my Windows PC. Now the IMs that I tested with this was the Noble Audio Stage 3, the The Audio Hype 4, and the Simgot EA1000. The reason why I'm picking those three, well the first two I have in to listen to anyway with Bree for my Hi-Fi for Bree series, I'm gonna link that up here somewhere. But then the other one, the Simgot EA1000, is a more sensitive IEM, so I wanted to see how this would pair up with those. Now. What I can tell you with the Stage 3 is just like it sounds, it has an expansive stage with the Stage 3. Vocalists are so smooth and mellow on the Stage 3, and I personally loved that pairing, and it gave it that extra impact down low as well, like I talked about, but just the vocal presentation was incredible with the two of these. The The Audio Hype 4, that has a lot of bass response to it. It has a lot of thump down low, and this actually added a little bit more of that thump down low and made that really engaging and very impactful, as you might think, into the bass response. The Simgot EA-1000 I bring up because it's a more sensitive IEM, but it also can get a little bit stabby and it can be harsh in that upper mid-range depending on the different nozzles and things that you have. And I am happy to report it tamed it just enough to make it more enjoyable than what I remember listening on other devices. But I gotta say, the Stage 3 and Hype 4 were my absolute favorites with this dongle deck to no surprise. I'm really digging both of those IEMs. Now I should also mention that I found myself going no more than maybe four to seven clicks of the attenuator knob for my comfortable listening level. And my comfortable listening level is probably around 75 to 85 dB. I don't typically go too much louder than that. All right, and so for my headphone testing, I kind of approached this the same way as the IEMs in that I chose an easier to drive headphone in the Aria Organic. I chose a harder to drive headphone in the Dan Clark Audio E3, and then a high impedance headphone with my ZMF Otour Classic. What I can tell you is one of my favorite pairings now with the Aria Organic is the DC Elite. Again, for that trouble nature that it just tames that ever so slightly. This is the most non-fatigued I have been listening to the Aria Organic as I have been with the DC Elite. 
And I love that, that extra impact into the bass response and that nice expansive stage all was part of that. Also, the Dan Clark Audio E3, remember I talked about the current output and not looking at just the raw numbers? This drives the Dan Clark Audio E3 just fine. Now, to be honest, I probably got up to about 15 steps on the attenuator, but hey, there's still five more steps left, at least from my listening level. And that was a comfortable listen, but man, it was such a robust sound. Again, I'm gonna keep saying that word because it is, it was just a full sound of the E3 and I got that impact. Now, what I will say about the DC Elite is as I said, it doesn't add impact to the mid range. So if you have a headphone that isn't as impactful into that or an IM that isn't as impactful, it's not going to correct that or add more to that, but it's also not taking it away from that nature either. And then the O-Tour Classic. This definitely drove volume out of the O-Tour Classic. It definitely gave it that fullness, but I just felt like I was missing a little bit more of that slam and impact that I usually can get out of that headphone with a lot of power. And I'm not saying it needs a ton of power, but it's just something that I find with high impedance headphones that helps them. So this can drive it, this can give it volume, this can still sound pretty dang good with it, but I do prefer desktop solutions and I prefer tubes on the Outour Classic. I mean, who doesn't prefer tubes on a ZMF, right? Now, really quick, I do wanna talk about the coaxial output of this device and tell you that no, I didn't test it because one, I don't have the cable type. You need a special, I believe it's a three and a half mil to three and a half mil four pole type cable to plug into something, but this can function as a DDC into a DAC. So it can be your digital analyzer of your music before you feed it into a DAC. And there's a lot of use cases I could see for that. I just didn't personally sample that to tell you. And I honestly don't believe that is the sole use of this dongle anyway. It's just something extra that you can do. Just like you can use this as a DAC and output into an amp if you wanted to, I just didn't do that. Didn't find the need because this sounds so damn good the way it is. I didn't find a reason to use this as a DAC on its own. Yeah. For those of you that watch my channel, you know that this is one of my favorite dongle DACs and that's the Cayenne RU7. So I had to pair the greenies up next to each other, they're both green, and just see the sound differences between the two. Now I love this dongle DAC and I really love this dongle DAC. This one, honestly, it did beat it out. I mean, I wasn't surprised by that, but the RU7 still provides a good amount of width and spaciousness to it. And in fact, I felt like at times it was even wider than the DC Elite. It's just the DC Elite, again, fills in those gaps of that wideness and has that extra bit of layering, more so even than the RU7. But the RU7 is still one hell of a dongle DAC. And I definitely wouldn't say anybody's wrong for choosing this if you wanted to save some money. But if you got enough to go up to the $449 DC Elite, yeah, I mean, I definitely think it's worth it. Also the RU7, before I forget, it is a little bit brighter than the DC Elite. And I don't think it's necessarily a bright dongle deck. It's just the DC Elite, again, just does a better job of that treble presentation, in my opinion, in case you're interested in the two. Oh, and I guess if it matters, this one also has a line out mode that is programmed in, whereas the DC Elite does not, but you could still use it as a DAC if you wanted to. Hopefully you enjoyed this video as much as I've enjoyed this drink. And if so, please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel because I am really trying to get to 5,000 subscribers. I would highly appreciate that. And please guys, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the DC Elite. Would you purchase this over something like an RU7 or even something like the Mojo 2 if you're okay with losing a little bit of features and gaining such an incredible sound as the DC Elite is. All right, I thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one. Tapping my feet to the TC Elite. Boom, 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 boom.